Hey, what up y'all? Mr. Cruz here, the hardest worker in the room, back with another video. And in today's video, what I'm gonna show you guys is how I use those plugins that I showed you in my previous video, which is all about my master bus. So if you haven't checked that video out, make sure you click the link in the description, check out that previous video, and then check this one out. All right, so we're pretty much gonna get into it. Um, I have this beat here and I've got my master bus, my master channel, pretty much empty. So I'm gonna add all the same plugins that I had previously told you about, and I'm gonna show you how I use them in order to in a sense, master my beats. There's a lot more that goes into mastering than what I am gonna show you, but what I am gonna show you is pretty much how I use that in terms of making sure that my beats sound nice, clean, crisp, and loud enough for me to be able to share and post and sell and all that stuff. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanna add is a compressor. Um, and if you remember from the video, previously, I said I like to use this compressor because it has an input knob, um, whereas the master channel one in Reason, right, this one right here does not have a uh, input knob. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this makeup knob because it's already set to plus five dB. Uh, so I'm gonna turn that down to zero or close enough to zero. If we get to, yeah, oh, I got it to zero. All right, uh, let's go ahead and cycle. I've got a chorus there, so let's go ahead and cycle that part. Um, and I'm gonna turn my threshold all the way up and let's go ahead and listen. All right, so what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna take my threshold and I'm gonna turn it down until I see a little bit of action um, of the compressor actually compressing something, actually kind of going into effect. And I really only trying to get like one or two dB, um, so I'm really only looking for a little bit of compression taking place here. All right, that part right there sounds good. I usually try to keep it to a closely, a relatively cl faster attack. Um, and uh, release, I usually put it to auto because it seems to do a really good job at determining, you know, um, what, what type of release it needs. All right, so that first thing done. Next thing up is we are gonna add ozone elements. Um, so we're gonna throw ozone in here. And in here, I'm pretty much gonna hit the master assist knob and actually open it up in this window here. I'm gonna open up the master assist knob and I'm just gonna let it do its thing. And then I'm gonna make my changes after the fact. All right. Uh, and I like to set it to high. So the difference here, um, cause somebody had asked me this cause I posted a video of this on TikTok. Um, the difference between low, medium and high, I don't remember low, but medium will have your maximizer or your limiter in ozone. It'll have the threshold set to negative 14 LUFS which is what you want, which is, you know, if you're uploading something to Spotify, that's what you want. High will set it to negative 11. I like to set it to high. And then because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the compressor um, to the limiter after the fact, and I'm gonna manually set it to negative 14 afterwards, but I still like to set it to high uh, here. So let's go ahead and listen. All right, so that did a pretty good job. Um, I feel like it, yeah, that's wild. Let's get back my loop. All right, so I still like the way that it sounds, but here's one thing that I always change. Usually with the EQ, it does a pretty good job at making sure that the EQ sounds nice and even. I, I sometimes touch up the low end, but the, since this beat has a whole lot of low end and it only tamed a little bit of it, I'm okay with where it is. But I like to go into the mid side area. Um, I'll leave the mid the way it is, but on the side, I will make sure that I take away some of the low end because I want that low end to be cut out from the high. I'm um, sorry, from the sides. And I'll boost a little bit of the high end for the uh, for the sides. Um, yeah, we could we could kind of well, I'll just delete that one there and we don't really need this one over here. So there's my mid, there's my side. Um, all right. Yep. And that sounds, sounds pretty good to me. So now I'm going to go into my limiter. Now I know a lot of people do the limiter last me. I like to throw my imager on last. So, 
Um, I'm going to enable True Peak and I'm going to enable Learn LUFS to negative 14. So while this is happening, I'm actually going to open up and move this out of the way. Uh, and I'm also going to add this you lean loud disc meter. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to throw my my imager in there as well and make sure that it did it correctly, it connected correctly. All right. Um, I'm going to disable this, but I'm going to have my loudness meter on and let's turn off the histogram. All right. So what I'm going to do here, dang, can I get these two to be in sync? All right, so this is gonna be a little bit tough, but what I wanna do is I wanna be able to monitor my levels with the loudness meter um, while making my adjustments in ozone. Um, so usually by setting it to true peak, it usually does a good job. And uh, when it learns the LUFS, you know, the threshold, it does a pretty good job there. Sometimes I'll have to make minor adjustments, but what I'm looking for on my loudness meter is I want it to, I want the true peak to definitely be at least, at least, negative one db all right um i don't want it to go any higher we'll say at most at most negative one db i don't want it to go any higher and then i'm going i'm looking at the integrated um meter to make sure that my integrated meter doesn't hit any higher than negative 14 uh lufs all right so let's go ahead and hit play and we're just gonna let ozone do its thing All right, so I see that my true peak is doing well, um, but my integrated is a little high. So I'm gonna turn my threshold up a touch and see if that works. All right, so that looks really good. Uh, if it jumps like 0.1 LUFS like that to me that doesn't matter um what Spotify is going to do is it's going to touch it down and I just want to make sure that when Spotify you know if Spotify has to limit it that it's only limiting a little bit it's not doing a whole lot because then it's going to make my mix sound or my song or my track sound really really low versus just like uh it's indistinguishable all right so we're pretty much done here that sounds good. That sounds good. Uh, and then we're going to do our imager. So this is the uh, M class stereo imager. I like it because you get to you get two bands here. And the reason I use this over ozone's imager here, ozone's imager, it, it affects the whole audio signal. And I don't want that. I want only to affect. I really want to widen the high end and I want to narrow the low end. So with this band splitter here, um, I'm going to turn this knob until I only hear the low end as I have solo um, the solo, the low band enabled, and then I'm going to make some adjustments here. All right. So right there sounds good. And I'm just going to touch the low end to the left, right. To kind of narrow that, uh, a little bit. And I'm going to do the opposite to the high band and boost it up a little bit. Now these adjusts are very minor, so it's not going to sound all that different. Um, but of course, if I've done really good, um, panning and, you know, placing everything in its, in its spot, then when I do this, this is really going to make it stand out. And we can AB it here. Now just listen to it. What I can really tell is that that low end, that kick really hits like much more focused, much more central. But anyways, there you go. That's pretty much my, my faux mastering, my pre mastering process to make sure that I got a track that is ready to upload, um, that it's going to sound the same on every single platform that somebody listens to it on. Uh, and that an artist who decides to buy it, you know, they buy MP3 or wave, they rap to it and they upload it to Spotify they can match their vocals to, you know, my beat and then they'll be all set. So that's what I got for you guys. Hopefully that was helpful and hopefully you enjoyed getting to see what my mastering process is when it comes to my beats before I put them online. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. It's your boy, Mr. Cruz out. Mm -hmm.